Hello, this is Matt Hoots and at Green Prince this year, not only did I get to meet some very interesting people, I got to also look at some new technologies that are out there. Well, one such person that was showing a more newer technology on, on energy modeling was Professor Lechner. He is an architecture professor at Auburn University. Now, Professor Lechner is going to explain to us the principles of a this device that you see is called a heliodon. Now, heliodon is a physical energy model where you can see the effects of the sun on a type of building that you're going to construct. Now what's important about a heliodon is with this it's a, it's a good way of teaching and with a sun emulator you can save up to 40 percent on your design just by orientating it correctly. Solar responsive design can be best explained by means of a heliodon, which is a device that simulates the sun at different latitudes, different times of year, and different times of day. And what we can do is uh, take a model of a building and show what happens at different times of year. And from that, learn the principles of solar responsive design. We can also test designs to see how well they really work. And so let me show you a demonstration on the heliodon. And this is a demonstration that shows you that not only is there such a thing as a free lunch, but you can get a free lunch that you get paid to eat. In terms of a building, that would mean you can design a building that uses less energy for heating, cooling, and lighting for the life of the building, and the building will be less expensive to start with. Now that seems unbelievable, but with the heliodon, which is not opinion, it is fact, it's it's physics, I can show you how true this is. Oh wow, so, so what kind of savings do you, can someone anticipate just with a better design and keeping around the same cost? In the best case, you can reduce your heating, cooling, and lighting, especially for commercial, lighting is important. In the best case, you could save 50% of that energy consumption by doing it right rather than doing it wrong. Well, But 10% is easy, and 20% is probably possible in just about every situation, at no cost. Uh, but as I said, uh, you can actually make a building less expensive by doing it right, because you can downsize the mechanical equipment and small equipment costs less. So you can have a building that costs less and saves energy forever after. Wow. So, so the, yes? So, so how does this work? All right, let's go through this little scenario of uh, what happens with buildings at different orientations. Let's say you're building your dream home and you're looking for a piece of land to build on and you find one on a north-south street. This is north-south on the Heliodon. This is east-west. And But before you buy it, you uh, want to see if there's something better. And sure enough, right around the corner, there is another parcel of land. It costs exactly the same. You already know what you want to build on that. So there's no difference in cost. It's exactly the same whether you build on an east-west or north-south. But let's see what impact there is on the energy consumption. Let me use a, uh, a hot month like July to represent the cooling load on a building on a north-south street. Notice that the long facade is facing the street. In suburbia, that is very realistic. And so in July, we find that the July, the summer sun, not just July, but the summer sun spends the whole morning in the eastern sky. And if you have a lot of east windows, that means you have a large cooling load. And then with this orientation, you also have a lot of west windows. So with this orientation, your building is getting blasted both in the morning and the afternoon. You're going to have very high cooling costs. Your air conditioning is going to be large and it's going to operate a lot of the time. Now what about in the winter? So let me pick a cold month like January. The sun now rises south of east. It does shine into those east windows for a short time. But it's the south windows that we see a simulation now of winter. And you can see that the south windows, this is 12 noon, are getting most of the getting the sun. But also notice that the buildings are shading each other to some extent. So in this case, with this orientation, you get very little help from the winter sun in helping to heat the building, and you're getting blasted by the summer sun. So it's a bad situation in both seasons. Now let's see what happens if instead you bought 
and built on the east-west street. Remember, it's the same cost, no difference. I'll go back to July. Now, because of the different orientation of the street and therefore the building, most of the windows are now north and south, few windows on the east and west, and the buildings are shading each other. So the cooling load in the summer has dropped dramatically. Much less money is needed to keep these buildings cool in the summer. And in the winter, the winter sun again rises south of east. It shines into those east windows for a short time, but it's the south windows that get the sun the whole day. They get by far the most sun. And now we have a lot of south windows. These are not solar buildings. These are just buildings with the right orientation. By having south windows, you get a lot of help from the winter sun, so your heating load and your heating bill is greatly reduced at no cost. Actually, building on this orientation will cost less because your air conditioning system is going to be smaller and therefore less expensive. So you have a free lunch that you get paid to eat. And I noticed for as one of these houses actually has solar on it, so with this design you have more direct sunlight throughout the year than you do with the That's, other one. I, I'm glad you mentioned that. With this orientation and this uh, roof orientation, it's also ideal for photovoltaics and active solar to generate hot water. And if you remember the previous orientation, this is far from ideal for collecting electricity and hot water. You're now facing either the east or the west uh, orientations, which is okay in the summer, but in the winter you will get very little benefit from the sun. So the east-west orientation is better in every respect. And unlike what you might think, that half the people have to be losers, it is not the case. Here's an example of a real development called Village Homes in uh, California, outside of San Francisco. And this developer understood these principles, and all 200 houses are winners. There are no losers. Everybody lives on an east-west cul-de-sac, even though the parcel of land is a north-south. A, a normal developer would probably have made more losers than winners. Oh, wow. So with knowledge, everybody can be a winner, at least in new developments.